It's a really rainy day and I decided to take the last of my spaghetti squash and turn it into some muffins. So I've had a couple requests for vegan muffin recipes and I thought this is the perfect day to do it. I'm starting off with a cup and a half of almond flour because I love almond flour because it's nice and um, moist and it's higher in protein than regular flour. And to that I am adding, actually I'm not going to add that yet. I think first I'm going to add my half cup of almond milk and give it a stir. And I'm going to be adding half a cup of cassava flour, but I'm not ready for that yet. And I may use a fork instead of a whisk. Let me leave that there. And see. Yeah, the fork is definitely going to be the tool for this job. Stir that around and get that nice and moist. Then I'm going to add my half cup of melted coconut oil. If you don't like the taste of coconut oil, you can use refined coconut oil, which has no taste, or you can use a plant margarine. Entirely up to you. Or you can use butter if you don't want this to be vegan. Now I'm going to mix this in. And the reason I'm not adding all the flowers at once is because I don't want there to be any lumps. And the almond flour sometimes has little lumps in it, so I want to get this nice and smooth before I add my cassava flour. So it looks pretty good. Here comes the cassava flour. And that's half a cup of cassava flour. Because I want to get all my liquids in at once, actually, I think what I'm going to do, I've got my chia seed, I've got a lot going on here. Where's my measuring spoons? I need a teaspoon of vanilla. teaspoon of cinnamon and I'm just going to eyeball this. That's a lot of cinnamon and I love cinnamon. So that's about it. And I want just, oh I don't want to forget the baking powder. We're going to have some really heavy muffins. There we go. Teaspoon of baking powder. We're using baking powder instead of baking soda because baking soda needs something to react with it. Like, uh, I'm going to add my now, this is chia and flaxseed. Back to baking soda and baking powder first, though. Baking soda requires something to activate it, like a vinegar or a lemon. And baking powder already has the activator in it, so it's all ready to go. This is one tablespoon of chia seed, one tablespoon of flax seed, both tossed into my coffee grinder, and they are good to go. That comes out to a quarter cup once it's been ground. And I prefer to grind my own because this tends to get rancid. Um, when, when you get seed that's already ground, it d just doesn't hold up as well, well as long as flax seed or chia seed in its whole little shell and in your refrigerator. There's that. I'm adding a quarter cup of monk fruit mm -hmm. because this is also going to be low glycemic. That grunt was my old dog Bugsy. He is very disappointed that there are no veggies involved today. This is a little stiffer than I'd like it to be, so hopefully when I add the spaghetti squash, that's going to moisten it right up. So the last two things are my dates and my walnuts, and they'll go in after the spaghetti squash. Now, if you don't like spaghetti squash or you don't feel like making a spaghetti squash, you could do zucchini with this. 
you could do pumpkin or you could do even applesauce. What you're looking for is something that's got a lot of fiber and moisture and you want about two cups of it. Yeah, that's definitely made it more moist. There we go. We don't want dry muffins. No. There we go. That looks nice. I've been writing this recipe as I go along. I have a couple of uh, gluten-free recipes in my book, but these have a number of different flours. Coconut flour, it's got oat flour, tapioca flour, and I thought I would stick to two flours for simplicity's sake. So as I was going along, I was looking at what I could use along with that to make sure that it binds. Because normally I love my eggs and I would have a bunch of eggs in here. But this is holding up very nicely. So that was two cups of spaghetti squash. This is about a third cup of chopped dates. You could use more or less. You could use raisins. You could use currants. You could use whatever you happen to have in your pantry. This is what I had in my pantry. I also have some chopped walnuts. And when you're making muffins, you want to make sure that you chop your nuts because it's not like with a bread where cutting into a nice whole walnut is a wonderful pleasure. When you're, having, when you're making muffins, a giant walnut in the middle just is taking up space. So you want to have little walnuts. You want little pieces of stuff. Well, this is quite nice. I like it. I want to make sure that we've got everything well distributed. Let's see. That's good. So I have prepared some muffin pans. And I decided to be lazy and just put paper in them. I've preheated my oven to 350. And I'm not going to bore you while I fill these muffin pans. And we'll be back when these beautiful muffins are done. Moment of truth. I cooked them for about a little under 30 minutes. I'd say between 25 and 30 minutes. See, I pulled them out, I guess, at, oh, they're still pretty hot. Pulled them out about 20 minutes ago. Let's see. Oh, I should have let them cool a little bit more because what's going to happen as they cool, you can see it's coming apart. And when it cools, the coconut oil is going to help to hold it together. Oh, you better just jump right in my mouth. Super moist, fantastically flavorful. Mmm. Walnuts are the perfect size. And you can even see the bits of spaghetti squash right here. It's a success. So, I'm all oily now, but the recipe will be on the website. And give it a try. You could make this into bread or you can make it into muffins, but it's a nice vegan muffin recipe. Gluten free, low glycemic, and as always, as healthy as I could make it for you. So give it a try and enjoy.